I was out driving yesterday and I saw just a, a great sign. It said very simply, Alexa, rake the leaves. <laughs> The legend goes that two angels, Pat and Chris, were once sent down from heaven, each with a basket. They went from place to place to poor houses and rich houses, visiting the children saying their prayers, as well as the people in the churches, old and young. Then at length, they came flying back with their loads. Pat's basket, was overloaded, but Chris's was very light, hardly worthwhile, one would have thought, to go so far and collect so little. Chris asked Pat, what have you got in your basket? I was sent to collect the prayers of all the people who said, I want and please give me, answered Pat. What have you got in yours? Chris replied sadly, oh, I've been sent to collect the thank yous of all the people who remembered whom God had sent a blessing, but see how few have remembered to give. This gospel that we heard this morning, you may recognize it as the gospel that is proclaimed if you come to Mass on Thanksgiving Day, celebrating the same reality, the, the 10 lepers. We've got to make sure that we are not quick to judge the other nine. This is not a story of judgment because leprosy at the time of Jesus was more than just a disease. It carried with it such a social stigma that you were no longer allowed to be in the presence of anyone else except other lepers. You had to be isolated from your family, from your community. Anyone who came in contact with you was declared unclean. People were genuinely afraid of you. So, you can imagine what it was like to be in that situation and then find yourself cleansed of this disease. Where did the other nine go? Well, in all likelihood, they were so overjoyed and so relieved that they went to their families to be reunited. That's very understandable. But there was the one, and Luke makes a point of saying as he is telling this story to, to a Jewish audience, this man was a Samaritan, an outsider, a no good piece of filth in many of your minds. Like in Luke's Gospel, we have the story of the Good Samaritan. I said at the beginning of Mass that what we do here needs to be an extension of our lives because Eucharist means giving thanks. The primary prayer of the church is a prayer of giving thanks to God. And we as the people of the church, we should be primarily about giving thanks to God as well. That story about the angels.
when you ask people, would you like to pray? Invariably, the first question becomes, what should I pray for? What should I turn to God and ask for? When are many of us most likely to turn to God? When we're in trouble, when somebody we know is in trouble? When our country or our world is in trouble? We want God to do something. Or we want something from God. One of the statements or sayings that I have picked up in my years of of being a priest, it's one I really, really like and I really find it powerful. This author said simply, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that will be enough. Think about that as we look into our lives and our hearts and the patterns of our prayer. Because gratitude has to be an attitude that we we cultivate. We learn how to be primarily grateful persons because that turns us away from being self-directed and self-centered and self-ish. Because when we remember to be more aware of what we do have, of how we are blessed by God who loves us, we don't worry so much about what we don't have or what somebody else has. And the thing about developing that attitude, it's so important because after a while we can forget. After a while, gratitude can fade. Once upon a time, there was a man in his early 30s who was diagnosed with a severe form of brain cancer. He had a wife and young children and a promising career. Suddenly, all of that was swept away from him. He could barely talk or walk. He was in constant agony. His friends and his family, except for his wife and mother, avoided him. The doctors shook their head. That's too bad. He was a nice man and he deserved to live longer. But there was nothing they could do. At last, he went to a very famous doctor who offered to operate on him, even though everyone else said that the tumor was inoperable. The doctor warned the patient and his wife that he could possibly die during the the operation, though he, the doctor, was pretty sure that he would survive and return to health. They decided that they should take the risk. After nine hours of surgery, the doctor came into the waiting room, grinned at the man's wife, and said, got it. The man recovered and went on to a happy and successful life. 20 years later, the surgeon died. We should go to the funeral, the patient's wife said. I'd like to, her husband replied, but it's on the weekend and I I have an important golf tournament. If the only prayer you say in your life 
is thank you. That will be enough. <laughs>